Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. In the last part two, we put together this bracket and the bracket that's right above me here. So now what I'm going to do is continue this bracket here. There's only a few more steps and then we can put up the mast, see how well that works. So I'll try and stand three lengths of it up and then I might even weld the fourth length into that mast. So that should be a lot of fun to prop that up. So before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some limit stops in here first. So I've just got some junk angle iron here and that'll stop this from pushing down. Now keep in mind that this bracket here that is on the wall, hi that's my shadow. This bracket here that's on the wall is so incredibly strong, believe it or not, it almost doesn't even need these blocks. It really is, it just sticks straight out and it, if I grab this, it, it barely moves. But with the weight of the mast on here, I figure that it would probably be a good idea to, to have those blocks there at any rate. I have a few pieces of angle iron cut. So there's three pieces in total. And I can set this on here like so. So it basically just sits up there. And then I'll put another two pieces here and I can slide these around on here like this until I get everything centered for the pole. And I'm also gonna put a hinge on there as well. So I'll weld the hinge to the top of those once I get everything sized. So I'll grab that hinge and I'll show you what I'm doing with that. I have the three pieces of angle iron now in place. Now they're just loose so I can slide them around. What I'm gonna do is put this hinge on here like so. So I'll probably you know, cut it off about here, something like that. And then I'm gonna weld a piece of pipe onto here that'll stick up and then the mast pipe will slide over that. So this will act as a hinge right here and I can hinge up the mast. So that's what I'm about to do now. It's about 40 degrees out here right now and putting on a welding jacket in the direct sunlight is a little bit crazy. So I'll wait till it cools off a little bit and then I'll start welding all this up. I can't even touch this pipe that's been out here. It's incredibly hot. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, weld all this up here once I get the masting pipe up in all sides and I'll show you that entire process here in just a little bit once the temperature settles off just a shade. I need a piece of pipe to weld onto this bracket here. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna cut off a random length of this conduit. It doesn't really matter as long as it just sticks far enough down into the actual main mast pipe. That's the, uh, that's the biggest thing, so. And that should be enough. This won't allow that other piece of mast pipe to kick out when I'm propping it up. And that's the reason that I have this insert and this also allows me to remove the entire mask very easily. I just slide it right off of this and you'll see this all go together here in just a little bit. Nice thing about this is this makes a relatively straight cut as well. It's nice for welding. And there we have it. So that'll get welded onto here, like so. While I'm waiting for things to cool off just a little bit, it is extremely hot here. Take a look at an upcoming project. Check this out, it's in very nice condition. So this is an AM FM radio receiver here from way back when, this is a black and white television. And we're gonna restore both of these together. I'd say the cabinet for this thing is about, oh, maybe eight and a half out of 10. It's in very, very nice condition. And I have even something neater on the other side. So we'll go check that out now. Here's another neat restoration coming up. This is a television radio combination from 1947. And for 1947, it has FM. So very neat. And this is the television here. So all the television guts are on top. Has a neat little story behind it. I found this in a barn in a field and me and my friend had to carry this a long ways through this field and it had a mouse house under here. So I wanted to check. So I lifted the actual chassis out right there because I wanted to see if the mouse house was very bad and if they'd eaten all the wires underneath, but it was actually in pretty good condition. The 10 BP4 looks to be okay, but I have to actually check it. It has the ion trap on it as well, which is very nice special little ion trap right there. And I'll explain all this when we go through the restoration. So what's inside is actually very nice. It's very nice in here. This is what it originally looked like, but the case of the cabinet is pretty rough. So that'll need to get restored too. 
and we'll go through that process as well. So this is another neat little project that's going to be coming up in the near future. As I finish welding up the last piece of mass pipe here, it's pretty hot. And I've got a blower fan going in the shop, and even this little fella landed in the breeze of the blower fan to try and cool off a little bit. I have the angle iron loosely just laid in place there and I've put the hinge down and I've set the pole on top of it and again I'm just looking to make you know everything nice and flush so I want everything you know straight up and down perfectly straight up and down so I've got a bungee cord at the top there and it's just clipped into a bunch of vice grips so it's holding the pole into the bracket so I can slide this up and down and get everything perfect so the reason I need that up there is because when the pole stands straight up, it's going to want to tend to fall forward, right? So that just holds it up so I can move things around. And then the next thing I'm going to do is put the clamps in at the top and clamp it rather tight just to make sure that the actual bracket that's sticking out is clamped straight to the pole because that might actually push this out just a little bit more. So I'm going to do that now. I'll put those little U-clamps in at the top and then recheck the bottom here. And uh, of course, you know, make sure everything is no good with this. It's looking pretty good so far. I have everything marked now, so I've drawn a red circle around the outside of that pole so I can weld that other little piece that we've cut to this, but right in the middle of that. So I'm going to center that and then weld that because it's a smaller diameter than this pipe, right? So I'll get that all welded up and everything on here is all marked in square and have the uh, actual brackets in at the top holding everything straight. So everything is looking really good. The base is now complete. So I still have to put some paint on this and put on the remaining nuts on the studs sticking out of the wall there. But it turned out quite well. So just from sitting for a few nights, you can actually see rust is setting in on these welds. So it's been so hot and humid here that you know, things are starting to rust. I might even have to go over this with a wire brush one more time. So what I'm going to do still is I'm going to drill a hole right in the bottom of this, right in the center of the pipe. Which is a small hole because chances are this thing is going to fill up with water right over time. But everything is all welded. Everything's all complete. And I cut the hinge off as you can see here and just welded it here on each side. And then I cut this off flush with this other side. So that worked out very well. I'll probably use that cold galvanizing compound that paint for this and that should last for a good long time keep everything from rusting so the base is pretty much complete at this point the completed mass pipe is just shy of 40 feet long so there's going to have to be two of us to put that up and i also still need to weld a loop at the top so i can put a pulley up there so i can hoist the antenna wire up and down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this shorter piece of mass pipe here i'll put it on the hinge and I'll show you how that all works. In the next episode, both mass pipes will be up and we'll start working on the actual antenna design. So I'll get that shorter piece, which is this one right here, outside, and I'll give you an example of how this is going to look. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and then hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.